Would you yep. mind giving all of our viewers an overview of the Freestyle Trampoline Association and you and what you do and what you're working on? Maybe two minutes max, just so people can ground themselves in who you are and why we're talking today. I was going to say, how much time you got? Um, no, yeah, I'll, right. <laughs> I'll keep it short and to the point. Um, I was on the Team Canada back in the day. Um, and I basically saw that there were some issues with the way the whole system worked. I ended up getting a really lucky sort of um, uh, opportunity to go with Nitro Circus. They saw some of my online videos back in like 2010, 11, and said, hey, come and do a tour with us. Uh, and we'll put a super trampoline in the middle of the stadium with motocross and BMX and R. Willie and Travis, all these guys doing their thing. So I got the tour with them uh, in Australia. And that gave us the idea for freestyle trampoline. For you guys who don't, do not know, Olympic trampoline has been around for many, many years and it was put into the Olympics in 2000. But since then, it's seen a steady decline uh, over the years just with social media and trampoline parks popping up and people just becoming more free and not wanting to necessarily do all of the traditional sports, we'll call them. So what that did is give us a bit of an opening to say, let's rethink trampoline. So we call it the Freestyle Trampoline Association. We did our first official event called GT Games, Garden Trampoline Games, in 2017 in Escondido, California. And that all of a, uh, all of a sudden just blew up. Uh, we didn't even realize we were tapping into this market of all these kids in their backyards that were just going nuts and doing quad backflips and triple this and, you know, quits that. And we're like, what? what's going on? Because we were still thinking about the traditional Olympic side, traditional gym clubs, sign up, become a member, you know, compete with your leotard and all of that still was in the forefront of everyone's mind. This little garden trampoline sect over here just did not exist. But we didn't know that they were talking online for many, many years. So what we ended up doing is saying, look, let's grab that kind of community. Let's give them a platform. They're a lot more like the Nitro Circus guys. This is a fresh start, fresh uh, mind state. You know, you don't just go to the old traditional guys and tell them to change their ways. You start with a fresh, new, open uh, system that then you can now put and then, you know, uh, build it towards helping the traditionals. But you got to start separate. You do not just ask them to change. And that we can maybe talk about that psychology of that a little bit later. But from there, we basically said, look, we're going to make this platform. We're going to do GT Games. It blew up on New York Times, LA Times, Steve Harvey. Ellen DeGeneres has covered some of the athletes that have been at the event. Uh, the list just goes on. And all of a sudden on Google Trends, it went Phew! Like this and you could see it it was the sport born on instagram officially now um and we ran with that we did events all over the world uh, from 2017 to covid um and we planted seeds all over the place that became our future partners future sponsors future athletes future clubs kind of like a traditional system and when covid hit we had to rethink uh we will get into all that it's esports and franchising virtual reality all these kind of cool things that we're uh, dabbling in now um, but once world or once the COVID was over, World Champs was up on 2022, and that set the stage for now what is becoming the World Series for Freestyle Trampoline. And as of this year, we just finished our World Champs. Uh, we added a girls category in. We added new countries. We got more broadcasts. We actually had a, a good, decent broadcast with our partners at Extreme uh, or Unreal Channel. Um, and everyone's super happy. And now we have signed an exclusive long-term deal with Eurotramp, which is the Olympic trampoline supplier for us to do freestyle with them, which is a landmark uh, contract because no one's really done anything like that before. And now the the basically the traditional side is being told by the IOC that, hey, your stuff isn't so cool anymore. Your viewership is down. No one's excited. You need to change or we might de-Olympify you by 2028. And this is coming from the federations. Uh, this is not my random belief. This is coming from them. So they are now on the chopping block and they're looking to quickly pivot to make sure that they're still relevant uh, in the digital sports age, what I guess we'll call it. Um, and we are at the forefront of leading that for at least the trampoline side, uh, kind of following the steps of parkour, which is really cool that we can have this conversation uh, because we're just a few years behind you guys. And uh, the way that the tra traditional system has been able to um, work with parkour and try to kind of, you know, take some of their values, uh, whether you like it or not, that's I'm sure we'll discuss that. Um, but we are in the same position with trampoline where trampoline is now, uh, you know, the, on its dying breaths and maybe we can revamp it a little bit to give us some new life, reposition it, uh, and be able to have a, a bright future for the athletes, the federations, maybe the Olympics, X games, wherever.